Many might recognize the name Tsinghua Unigroup due to its striking similarity to one of China's most prestigious educational institutions, Tsinghua University in Beijing. However, as suggested by the title of this discussion, there's more to uncover about this enigmatic entity. So what exactly is Tsinghua Unigroup, and how did it become linked with the term corporate bankruptcy in the context of China? Contrary to a typical narrative of growth and decline, Tsinghua Unigroup's story is uniquely fascinating, particularly in the current geopolitical climate. The company symbolizes China's transformative economic journey and its aspiration to secure a prominent position in the critical semiconductor industry. Semiconductors are undeniably central to today's global economy, a fact that is well acknowledged. It could even be argued that China is lagging behind its counterparts in semiconductor manufacturing, with Western powerhouses and neighboring East Asian nations increasingly withholding chip exports to China. The significance of this industry is beyond dispute. However, despite its importance and ambition, Tsinghua Unigroup ultimately found itself on a path of decline, as implied by the title of our conversation. To fully grasp this downfall, it's essential first to trace the company's ascent. Only then can we delve into the reasons that Tsinghua Unigroup became a casualty within China's corporate landscape. Tsinghua Unigroup, an affiliate of Beijing's prestigious Tsinghua University, once epitomized China's ambitious drive in the global semiconductor race. Emblematic of the country's aspirations to revolutionize its economy and attain dominance in the critical semiconductor industry, the company's trajectory was profoundly intertwined with China's broader technological goals. Bolstered by extensive state support and plentiful funds, Tsinghua Unigroup adopted an aggressive expansion strategy. It acquired numerous chip makers and semiconductor-related companies worldwide, even making an audacious though ultimately unsuccessful $23 billion bid for American chipmaker Micron Technology in 2015. This ambitious endeavor was a symbol of China's determined stride into the international chip industry. As a significant player in the tech landscape, Tsinghua University was integral to China's plans to offset its dependency on semiconductor imports. Despite being the world's largest consumer of semiconductors, the tiny chips powering everything from smartphones to military aircraft, China had traditionally been heavily reliant on foreign supply chains, leading to a considerable trade imbalance and vulnerability to external supply disruptions. Tsinghua University, often compared to MIT, redirected the company's trajectory from diverse sectors like real estate and logistics towards technology, primarily semiconductors, in the 2000s. This change, of course, was gradual but deliberate, facilitated by generous state support including financial backing and favorable policies. In the subsequent years, Tsinghua Unigroup pursued a remarkable expansion spree, establishing multiple subsidiaries and investing in research and development. Its acquisitions included a $3.78 billion stake in Western Digital, a leading data storage company but later failed and the purchase of two major Chinese mobile chip makers, Spreadtrum and RDA. At its pinnacle, Tsinghua Unigroup had raised over $24 billion in funding and was lauded as the vanguard of China's semiconductor self-reliance. Its charismatic chairman, Zhao Weiguo, frequently spoke about his vision of transforming China into a global chip powerhouse. However, the company's aggressive growth strategy, underpinned largely by debt, eventually started showing signs of strain. This forebodes the intriguing unraveling of Tsinghua Unigroup and the intricate high-stakes game of tech finance, a captivating saga that continues to unfold. By the mid-2020s, the once formidable Tsinghua Unigroup began teetering on the brink of financial ruin. The company's aggressive expenditure had accumulated a burdensome debt that became increasingly difficult to manage. With intense market competition and an elusive vision of chip dominance, the company found itself struggling to maintain its foothold. The first indication of trouble surfaced in November 2020, when Tsinghua Unigroup defaulted on payments for bonds worth billions of dollars. The tech giant, seemingly invincible, had encountered a formidable financial hurdle with ominous implications. By July 2021, the situation had deteriorated to the point of impending bankruptcy. This abrupt downfall sent shockwaves through the tech industry and served as a blow to China's ambitions for semiconductor self-reliance. It underscored the challenging path towards this goal, 
and the potential hazards that lay ahead. To fully grasp Tsinghua Unigroup's decline, it's crucial to understand the backdrop. The world of semiconductor manufacturing is a high-stakes, capital-heavy arena. It demands considerable upfront investment, advanced technology, and a highly skilled workforce. It's also a cyclical industry, vulnerable to demand volatility, pricing pressures, and geopolitical frictions. Tsinghua Unigroup's strategy relied on significant borrowing to fuel its rapid expansion. It issued bonds, secured bank loans, and sought investments from various quarters. While this approach propelled the company's growth, it also burdened it with a significant debt load. By the late 2010s, the company's financial footing began to wobble. Its escalating debt levels started to outstrip its cash generation capacity for debt service. Reports indicate that by the end of 2020, the company's debt had skyrocketed to a staggering 200 billion yuan around $31 billion, a threshold deemed unsustainable by many analysts. Simultaneously, the global semiconductor market was in turmoil. US-China trade frictions were intensifying, with the Trump administration imposing several restrictions on Chinese tech firms, which included curtailing their access to American technology. This development significantly impacted Chinese semiconductor entities like Tsinghua Unigroup which found itself unable to acquire or license necessary technology or depend on foreign markets for product sales. The situation was further aggravated by the COVID-19 pandemic. The ensuing global recession triggered a drastic contraction in demand for various products, leading to a slump in the semiconductor industry. Amid these challenging conditions, Tsinghua Unigroup's financial health deteriorated even further. By late 2020, the company was edging towards a liquidity crisis. Its first ever default on a bond payment in November sent shockwaves through China's financial markets, resulting in a downgrade of Tsinghua Unigroup's credit rating. Despite frantic efforts to offload assets and raise funds, the company's financial struggles persisted. In July 2021, one of its creditors initiated bankruptcy proceedings against Tsinghua Unigroup marking a remarkable downfall for a firm once celebrated as China's standard bearer in the semiconductor industry. But the Tsinghua Unigroup saga didn't end with bankruptcy. The embattled tech titan underwent a significant restructuring process that, despite its complexity, aimed to put it back on the path to recovery. The restructuring process was no mean feat. It meant managing enormous debts, preserving company operations amid the turmoil, reducing the workforce, liquidating assets, and assuaging anxious creditors. Nonetheless, Tsinghua Unigroup devised a robust restructuring plan that sought to salvage its operations and chart a path towards recovery. By mid-2022, it had successfully completed its debt restructuring, marking a crucial turning point in its recovery journey. Following several months of negotiations with creditors, Tsinghua Unigroup's bankruptcy restructuring plan gained approval from a Beijing court in early 2022. According to the plan, the company's substantial assets, including its controlling interest in chipmakers Unisoc and Unigroup Guozhin, would be liquidated to repay its towering debt. Interestingly, despite the financial woes of the parent company, some key subsidiaries like Unisoc, formerly Spreadtrum Communications, were deemed financially healthy. The main objective of this restructuring plan was to prevent the total collapse of Tsinghua Unigroup and extract as much value as possible from its assets for its creditors' benefit. The plan also fostered hopes of retaining certain operations under the Tsinghua Unigroup brand allowing the company to emerge from bankruptcy in a diminished but viable form. The high-profile restructuring drew the attention of various interested parties, both domestically and abroad. A consortium of state-backed investors led by the National Integrated Circuit Industry Investment Fund and Beijing's municipal government became key players. They agreed to inject approximately 60 billion yuan, or $9.4 billion, into the company offering it a lifeline to sustain operations. This intervention was viewed as the Chinese government's commitment to securing the survival of a strategically vital industry. Tsinghua Unigroup's predicament underscored the broader challenges confronting China's semiconductor industry. It exemplified the risks of rapid expansion fueled by debt and an over-reliance on imported technology. 
Moreover, it highlighted the complexity and challenges of the semiconductor business, even when backed by extensive resources and political support. However, despite Tsinghua Unigroup's bankruptcy, China's ambition to become a global semiconductor leader remains unshaken. The Chinese government persists in heavily investing in the sector, spurring domestic companies to develop indigenous chip technologies and reduce reliance on foreign imports. The Tsinghua Unigroup story thus serves as both a cautionary tale and a rallying cry, emphasizing the roadblocks ahead and the resilience needed to navigate the high-stakes semiconductor industry. However, despite the hardships, Tsinghua Unigroup is not defeated. The company continues to move forward and is now under new leadership. Tsinghua University, its parent entity, has distanced itself from the company, giving it autonomy to pursue a fresh start. But anyway, do let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.